Okay, welcome everybody. Let's get started then. So what we're looking at today is just some examples of spatial analysis using Enlighten, which is our web-based product. Traditionally, if you do spatial analysis, if you're doing it through traditional GIS products or desktop products, that's where you're going to do it. And there's a couple of ways that you would do that and Enlighten's in fact a little different. So typically, spatial analysis starts with essentially creating copies of data by combining data sets. So if you want to know, you know, show me how many of these are within that, you would extract that out as a layer. And there's different ways of doing that. And when you run that kind of analysis, you create new layers or outputs. And then upon each layer, you can perform additional analyses or summaries, et cetera. With Enlighten, we use a slightly different philosophy in that layers or steps within the analysis are simply a view or a filter or an applied query that applies the logic of what you're trying to achieve. And so there's a number of different ways that you can do that and it's different situations. And there's just a few steps which I'll go through in the short webinar to show how that works and how we do that in the browser without creating a whole set of additional layers, etc. So what happens is you use a combination of the viewer itself in the browser and the ability to show and select specific things. Selections form the core of what has been applied. And usually we use the power of the Oracle spatial engine to analyze the data to return your results. By that, I mean, yes, you can do a standard SQL query, you know, find all pipes larger than this and older than that. That's just a SQL query. However, because Oracle includes all of the spatial functions within the database as regular queries, you can also do things like nearest neighbor, contains, touches, crosses, et cetera, as a standard SQL query. And that's what Enlighten makes use of in large part and returns that as a selected result. And so that's really the power of it. Let's actually go and look at some of that. Oh, and just a word on that. So Oracle used to have Oracle Locator and Oracle Spatial. There were different levels of the spatial functionality. That is now changed fairly recently, last couple of years. Oracle includes all of the spatial analytics in all Oracle standard in databases. So you get it in the free version XE, you get it in all of them. You don't necessarily have to buy enterprise to get that higher end functionality. Let's take a look at some of those. So in Enlighten, there's save selection. You can actually save a selection. That's essentially just the filters used to find that subset of data. And we then save that, which saves essentially a index of the IDs of each of those features. On the menu, you'll see a save selections. Search is useful. Search is also essentially derives a subset as a selection. Layer filter. So that would be within any given layer, go and find specific features and conditions. And I'll walk through those. There's the spatial functions, including nearest neighbor and spatial functions like touches, includes, excludes, contains, etc. There's buffer. So that applies as a filter, which can be used around any feature and then use this defense for within which to select or exclude. Selections themselves on the browser, you can select with a radius, a polygon, you can draw an area or you can select within and those are all functions. Then also we have network trace. So now we're starting to do spatial analyses using the explicit topologies within the data and then stop predicates and I'll show some of those. And if you combine all of those, you can automate things like size, depth, offset plots or automated information statements. And if you've not seen those, we'll just look at them. And of course, then you can combine all of these things. You can use them individually or combine them to do an achieved result. So let's look at some examples on that. So just in Enlighten on the menu, there's spatial functions, pulls up a task pane. Let's just look at these. And these are coded actually, the red versus the blue. The red is the feature that you have selected and the blue is the analytic that you use to do that. So the blue contains, if we're looking at top left contains, so red would be this feature, show me something that contains it or the opposite way around for inside. The red is the feature you've got and what is inside of it. And so you go, and then there's interaction of outside touching overlapping or crossing equals, and then any interaction, which would include contains inside uh, crossing touching. Okay. In the dialogue, you'll see it actually gives you a summary there with a color coding as to which ones, which as you run through them. So let's do an example using that. So special functions, simple within. So let's say you wanted to find all pipes within a polygon. 
that would be, you know, pipes in a pressure zone or a particular milling region or anything like that would be a polygon. So you can select the polygon feature or you could actually draw that polygon feature. So it could be an existing feature. In this case, this would be a, uh, one section of the water district and their boundary. Say you wanted no pipes in this area and not that area. You could select that boundary. You can actually draw a red line polygon and then use that as the polygon. So you can, any shape you like, or you could do that as a buffer, et cetera. Then you select the spatial functions, this icon on the menu, and that'll pop up a dialog like this. And at this point, you have these drop downs. So you can say, okay, the target layer is the water pipes. So what you get there is a drop down of all the layers available. And then you want to say, select a spatial function and say inside. So if you step back, the one you have is the zone. So the outside, the red, and what you want to know is to select all the water pipes inside of that. So once you hit submit, you're going to then put that in. So if you look at the drop down, all the layers are available. Sometimes, however, in Lighten, the display, as you see actually on this map, you can't see the pipes. But what we've done is we override that display for a query like this, so that when you make that selection, you will in fact see the pipes. So look at that. I haven't changed zoom scale, but here are the pipes that are within that polygon from that dialog. So you just hit OK, and it's going to be about, you know, in this case, there's a few thousand of them. And they were not visible at that scale, but now they are. And so now at this point, you can actually save that selection. And then use that for further analytics. So you could say, okay, now that I know the pipes in this polygon, I can go and apply that, use that selection set. So it's all driven by selection sets. Here's another example. So this is a point in polygon with a couple of conditions. So mm -hmm. these are traffic signs. Actually, those are the poles and on the poles are traffic signs. So there's actually a, a slight offset there because one pole may have many traffic signs, but there's data on the traffic signs saying which are in poor condition. Actually, they were done with a mobile data capture and you can see here's a picture from it. And this one's got markings on it so they can't read it from its distance. So it's in poor condition. And so the question here is by management zone, give me a list of the signs in poor condition. And I want to know what types they are, essentially building out a replacement program and costing that so that we have the, the replacement cost for each region, and then also to prioritize that. So if we do that in Lighten, what you do is set up a filter to say, okay, I want all traffic signs in poor condition. And then you would do a within polygon, just like we did now and get those. So you apply a layer filter, so you can save that, or you could of this type and condition, you select the management zone, and then you run a special filter that says, to give me that selection within that zone. And obviously now we filtered by type. So these little blue dots would be poles that have signs on them that are in poor condition and they're inside that management zone. And then you have it on the form here. And you'll see there's type and subtype, for example, they're all non-functional and we have information about them. So these types in this instance, we're very interested in the regulatory signs, basically because there's regulations, legal requirements to have those signs there, typically like a stop sign at a crossing. If that sign is not there and there's an accident, well, then the city's going to be liable. So you want to know all oh, that signs got graffiti over and nobody can read it. Same thing. Okay. So this then allows to get a listing of those per management zone. So you can go and budget and say, okay, let's do the regulatory ones first. They're more important. We know how many, we know what type, we know what the replacement cost for each is. So we can actually model that out and have a plan. And that's one thing to do. So. You can see all the locations, you can map it, you can print it. You can also get a report of those. So sorry, the, uh, we've put the, the Enlighten toolbar down here just to show you. So this would have been the function that we used there with the layer filter over there. Advanced forms also need a mention because that is producing statistics. I don't know if you've looked at it, but if you're an admin on Enlighten, you can in the advanced form go in and set up and activate statistics on any given column. So let's look at a problem of what pipe materials are within any given selection. What you can do is if you're on the back end, so this is the admin, admin can go in and look at the column statistics that can be analytic or ordinal. It really depends on whether it's analytic would be essentially numeric and ordinal would be type. So it's categorized. Okay. And then you can turn that on. So if you go in and do it, so it's either nothing or analytic or ordinal. And when you actually then then use that on the form, the user sees this. So they could go in and apply a filter, a layer filter or whatever to get a subset of 
pipes. So say I wanted to know the count of the, in that previous example, the count of each of those types, I could have turned on analytics. And if I clicked on that little icon for that column for type of sign, I would get a list. So in this case, we get pipe material. If I click on that and it's been activated in the back end, I can get stats. And the statistics here show me by type. Do take a note, one little subtlety, all these little blue checkboxes, they mean different things. The ones on top of a column mean that that column gets used to export the data. I'll show you that in a minute. The one next to a row means that row is selected. This one is the top of all the rows on this page. So this page would usually have, I don't know, 50 or so records. That one up there is critical. If you wanted all 5,000 of these, so this is essentially the list from that very first analytics we did, you need to check that box because that would give you the entire list, not the page by page list. So those two are fairly important to know. But anyway, what we're doing is immediate stats are available on the selection set. So that then pops that up. So advanced form already gives you that. And then within an advanced form, so I'm yeah, just pointing out the, the stats per page or per the entire thing. Once you have a selection set, you can actually save that and then apply one selection to another. So let's say we, for example, we want to do a search and use a saved selection with a search. So if you find all pipes larger than a given diameter, this is in millimeters, obviously in US it'll be inches. And the pipe material is AC or asbestos cement, and they're in water zone one. So remember we did that zone of pipes. We could save that as a, a selection for water zone one, and then we could apply the diameter and material filter to that. So if you go to search, you can set it up here and go to the search and say, give me pipe diameters. And so the admin has set up a search that includes pipe diameter and material properties as available search criteria. So the user can go in for diameter and actually search for that and type in the material here and then create a search. So once they've done that, they can just choose to display the operator. So it can be larger than or greater than or equal to. So in each one of these boxes for diameter and for material that you've got, you can apply that. So once again, the admin can set up whether it always is just equals or contains or whether the user can see all the options. Okay. And so if you don't see those, then that's something you can apply and the admin can control who can see which searches and all of that. So let's say we've got a selection set and we've saved that. So for example, one where we showed all pipes within that zone, we've saved that selection, those 5,360 pipes. And then we're going to select the pipes that are greater than and, and this within it, and then zoom to the results. So you can do that in the advanced form and you can save that selection set. So here is that selection set that we previously saved. So there's the filter by selection. So that's what's there. You can do a current selection. The plus and the minus are public or private selections. So if you save a selection, you can save it as public, meaning that any other user can see it or private, just you. So those are options. So then you go and actually get that list. So here's then the list of 57 for the 300 millimeter AC pipes. And this is on all of them. So I could simply select that, select the whole lot. There's the advanced form there. If you click advanced form now, it's going to load up this selection here, and then you can do a report on that. Layer filters, very useful layer filters. Find the nearest hydrant to a property. So this is combining a layer filter with a nearest. First of all, from water nodes, you select a layer filter. Layer filter pops up a panel like this, and the admin can set up different filters on different things. So, so there's different kinds of filters. It could just be the type, like we saw material and diameter in the previous one, or it could be a tree, which is useful. Tree view, if it's a category, you can get a list and you can check more than one type. So this would then pop in each of those. So that's kind of useful. And then you've got the usual operators here and then a value there. So this is running on a column order nodes and it's on the node category column and it's equal to, and you can choose, you know, what kind active abandoned or whatever, and then each specific feature type. So the other thing about selections, if you save on exit, those selections remain active through decision. So if you exit Enlighten and come back tomorrow, you can actually save those selections. So tomorrow you come back, you can find the selection where you work today. So in this example, only the hydrants here, which are checked will remain. And so we can go in and you'll look, you see, here's all the vowels showing here. And what we're only interested in hydrants, and we're also, this is the parcel of interest. So we've been setting the parcel, this is the subject to say, show me the hydrants closest to this. 
but we're excluding and we're going to select water nodes, but we only want the hydrant nodes. We don't want all the valve nodes. And so that layer filter excludes, even though we're using the water nodes layer by adding a filter, we're only using a subset of the nodes within that layer. So here you'll see those are no longer selected and then we can get a list of those. So you select your property, you go to nearest neighbor, you can select the distance to consider and then off we go and you'll see then on the nearest neighbor function. So now I've put a layer filter. Now I'm running the nearest neighbor and it's saying, okay, I want water nodes. And so this is the subject property. This is the thing to go and analyze. So it would have been, so the reds and the blues remember, and it's going to return then the two hydrants that are closest to that property within a limited maximum distance and yeah, a maximum number. So it would have stopped at five, but within a hundred meters, once again, it's so that hydrant and that hydrant would be the nearest hydrants. And there they are. And then of course you can output them in the advanced form to a spreadsheet or a CSV. All right, moving on. Another example, find all pipes crossing a particular road. So you select the road or you do a search to find the road. You select the function you want. So this would be crossing. So, or any interact. So this would be crossing or touching or contained you know, if it was a polygon. So select the road. So you see, here's the road all the way down here. That guy, and the selection color is black. And we then ch chose the function for any interact. So this panel appears. And what we want is on the selection we've got, show any interaction of water pipes. And it actually tells you, select all water pipes on a selected street name. So when you hit submit there, you'll get a subset here that returns and it's essentially done a spatial filter on all of those and then given you the pipes. So that was your subject. And then you can, once again, get a list, pop that out, et cetera. So the advanced form, very useful for getting and showing any of those applied functions. You can also, when you export from the advanced form, you see these little blue check marks for each column. This is what we call the list view. So in the advanced form, there's three panels, essentially. The left-hand side is the tree view. It shows what features there are and how many that are selected. There's list view, which is these rows, and there's details view. So for the row that you're on, you see the details. Export only works with list view, and these are the columns. So that will put that out to a spreadsheet. It kind of looks like a list. But if you don't want some columns, you can uncheck those checkboxes, and then when you run export, you won't get all of the columns, okay? So when you hit then that Excel spreadsheet icon, this one here to export, it will take whatever's selected or all, so we can select them all and output those into the list and allow you to download that to a CSV, which pops up like this. So these are the columns. So that's how you can get to answer this question, all pipes crossing a specific road. And then you'll know what kind of pipes and what size and all of that. Okay, so here's one. This is polygon. So if you have a specific point or in this case, a parcel, what zone or district is it within? Okay, so you can go in, select the subject, apply the function, and then in that set up what it is. So here we go. We've gone in, selected that polygon we had before and said a spatial function, but this time we've said it contains and so it's basically saying, I've selected the parcel ahead of time. Show me which water boundary contains that subject matter. So here's the select all water zones on the parcel that we've got. And we know it's only the one. So it returns here and you basically get yourself the information for that parcel. And it's, it's a much, it's the bigger outline that it's within. All right. Network trace. So network trace is an applied function that does all its analytics on the database using the start and end nodes, explicit information in the tables. So just to kind of show it, I think most people would have seen this, but it's that icon up there and we're going to run a trace. So this is a water trace and I'll just run the video so you can see it. So when you hit the icon, you get this dialogue popping up over here. Trace can be done on water and sewer. It knows whether it's water or sewer, water being a pressure system, sewer being a gravity system. It'll pop up different options on what kind of trace. For water, there's a full trace will do a bi-directional. So look at all water sources coming in and we'll show you that one now. And we'll come back to stop predicates and pre-calculated as well. So pre-calculated just speeds it up because it's there, but you don't have to do that. You can do it live as well. So here it's going to run the trace. So it already knows the connectivities and it'll then come in and give you the results on that. So I'll just stop there. So the results get displayed in the list here, just as a summary. So it says, 
okay, the full trace is done and it ran there and it has an ID. We actually track these on the back end. There's four valves affected. So you need shut four valves. We'll isolate that pipe. There's nine pipe sections. There's 21 parcels and 21 services. So there's the little, you can see them here, the service connection. And so in this instance, those highlighted for whatever, you can choose the selection color. In this case, it's orange, but there's a valve, there's a valve, there's a valve, and there's a valve. And they actually will get, you, there'll be a network trace legend, and you can expand that out and you'll see that's how I know it's an orange one. Okay. It's not expanded at the moment. And you can then go in and also show report. If you see that, that will pop up the advanced form for you and give you the listing because these are now selected. So you would see, and if it's sewer, for example, on the pipes, we've got options to calculate, you know, volume, et cetera, on it as well. You can also trace through. So say this valve was stuck. You could select, you could hit trace through here, select that one, and then rerun the trace. And it would then go to the next set and expand the trace out. So very useful. Actually quite useful for also adding to automated reports. So stop predicates, you can apply these on the trace. What this is, is an override. So now it basically isn't worrying about what connects to what per se, what valve shut things off. You're basically telling it only stop when you get to this predefined thing. Okay. So use a technical term. So you can use this to say you run the trace. And then you select the stop predicate. So the stop predicate could be anything that you've set up. It could be only stop tracing when you see a pipe diameter change, for example. So it's now not looking at valves. It's saying, okay, I'm going to look when the diameter has changed. And then you build a map out. Okay, show me from this particular pipe, connected pipes spread out through the network matrix, but stop when you get to this size diameter pipe. It doesn't, it's not just a change. It's a specific value. And so it'll trace through to a specific feature, things like valves that are closed, normally closed. So you can trace and then actually realize that that thing's there. And you can then see, okay, if I'm in this section, which valves are normally closed, you can be any attribute on the node or on the pipe. Okay. So this is what the dialogue looks like. When you run trace, you can hit that stop predicate and then you get these options. So there's different things that can be on the node or the pipe and you can set up a filter. So here it's closed valves or a particular symbol, or you can trace it. We do set the number of pipes to, to trace through because it gets kind of a large selection set. So sometimes you want to max that out, et cetera. And then once again, you can run it. You can also load this from a file. So when you run a trace, you can actually save that trace. Okay, and we'll come back to that maybe later, but you can save the results of any given trace. And for that, that's what we do with that trace is we save the results. So we can set up and run predefined traces. Here's one way we would use it. If you want a shut off event, you can run what we call shut off blocks, which literally is a backend process that goes to every pipe, water or sewer, and saves the set of features that would be impacted if that pipe needed to be isolated. So in that way, we've got a pre-calculated shut off event because the calculations are quite heavy and they can be quite complicated. But by pre-running those, we already have the IDs of all of the features for that one, and we save those. So here's an example of using that. So what we're doing here is streamlining the creation of shutoff event data using a combination of enlightened tools and, and to a streamlined process. So yes, this is a predefined backend process using a whole lot of things. It uses network trace, the shutoff reporting. So shutoff blocks is basically which blocks or which features typically parcels or properties or connections, and then saving that as a list. And then in this setup, we actually then combine that list with a plot and integrate that so that the output can be a map and a list. I'll show you. Here's a shutoff report for sewer and for water. And so this can be, you know, planned or you can go and run this before or after, and you can set it up and actually save this setup and then come back and you'll get the results and then you can create a plot automatically. And you can streamline these all into one workflow. So it's just another way of building that out. And so if you come in, you can say, oh, it's a shut of confirmation, job number, whatever, go for it. And there's a few options that you can do. And here's an example output. This is obviously, there's an event there and they've done a report to say, we're going to do a repair. We need to automate who it goes to and produce a PDF. And this is the job and we've taken out the actual data here, but it would then fill in this stuff automatically and they could come for some manually, but literally push button.
to get the outputs of a map and a listing based on the geos data and straight out of Enlighten in the browser. Here's one that's a slight modification on that. It's a different kind of automation, but it uses the analytics and the automation thereof. What this is called is a size depth offset. Typically, somebody wants to know what utilities run through their property and what are the distance parameters for that in terms of checking. So you'll see, and this is fully automated. Basically, they could log in, go to the city's maps, type in the address, they need to log into the city system to be able to produce this report and literally push the button and get a report like this. So the first thing we're going to do is going to look at, in this case, sewer and water, and it's going to look at the location and say, okay, at the east of this property, there's an offset there that requires two meters and then another one, 1.5 inside and which side and what kind of tapping it is dry or wet. And for this particular city, they would get a few hundred of those a month where people would ask, and it would really take about 15 minutes before to generate that to people to check and go and actually select, whereas now it's fully automated. And that's, we're saying it's five minutes, but it's actually quicker than that. The five minutes is some, when the plot is produced, somebody checks it before sending it out. And what that's done is it's really, there's no backlog anymore. There used to be about a 15 day backlog before anybody would get their report back. Here's another one. It's fairly similar. This is an automatic information statement. So it doesn't do the offsets distances and give the reporting on that. And so this one will, will pull in or from the billing system. People can actually say, I want an information seat, sheet form the assets traversing the land. And it will know what parcel it is. And it will just go in and map it and then give it a little summary. Say water man does not traverse the property. Sewer so does. So with water and sewer, they can do it. Here's a water and there's an example of both. So just to give that example. With those analytics, you can do a lot. If you go back, it's all driven by select something, apply an analytic, get a, an additional selection set, save that and repeat or output your report from there, which can be both graphic and a data listing. So really to summarize and close that off for the power of the database is all of that functionality is available and within Enlighten admins can set up which users can and can't use what functions as well. So you have some control, but we can do the spatial stuff as well as just standard attribute kind of filters, SQL queries. You can compare them against each other and analyze them using the selections and saved selections. There's a lot that you can do. Doesn't mean we do every last piece of analytics, but it's very powerful and dynamic and live. So you can go in and do that. If there's something that you want to do and you haven't been able to do, that would be something that you can contact us and we'll either show you or look at show you in the manual where that's covered, or you can even send an email to support at open special and you'll get a reply on that. So that's our main support thing, by the way, you can ask questions there, or you can send them to your administrator and get them to do it. That's fine. So any questions at this stage? And if you can't think of them now, I've given you a technique where you can support it open spatial and we'll do that. It is in the manual. So if you go into Enlighten, you can look at the help files. All of those analytic functions are there and explained on the different icons, etc. So I'll leave it at that. Thanks very much for your inputs and for attending the webinar. Have a, have a good day and appreciate your time. Thank you.